Well, are we going to do it like this? Or we... Well, Alan, I thought our conversation on Friday was really interesting. Friday? Um, terrible, I, I thought it was really interesting when you started talking about the show from your kind of academic perspective mm -hmm. as an ecological psychologist. So maybe do you want to talk a little bit, a little bit about that? Uh, well, I was just explaining what the... the uh, um, event was on Friday. Mm -hmm. It was basically a portrayal of uh, trash cans. It was like a slideshow, as you say, a series of them, uh, all the same diameter, uh, different kinds of trash accumulated in this uh, in these receptacles. Uh, so there must have been uh, I don't know, several hundred images of trash, and so uh, we were. Uh, talking about the uh, meaning of that. I don't know depth. Uh, uh, oh, well, we could bring depth in there in the sense that uh, you could talk about trash as just as the image and you say, oh, some trash. Or you could say, oh, I see there are these uh, cups and these newspapers and these other things. And you could say, okay, ask what kinds of things does that reflect of, uh, of uh, the society in which these people had done that. I actually thought further about that and thought that, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, you can even think about trash in terms of uh, people's uh, uh, external uh, throwing out things, but there's also internal things. I mean, it's waste, basically. And our bodies have waste. And our waste, I mean, uh, is analyzed. Uh, uh, urine tests, for example, medical and so forth. So in a sense, uh, the waste of internal waste that we have, it can be the basis of a diagnosis of people. So in some sense that's, uh, and you could take the same notion and look at the waste of, uh, of external waste that the same species is producing mm -hmm. and ask, okay, what kinds of things does that reflect mm -hmm. about those people? What so kind of, kind of an internal waste yeah. and external waste, just another uh, dimension. So I don't know if that's depth or not, but anyway, it's an idea of going to taking a starting point. And, uh, and moving from that to other associations that might lead to a whole lot of other things mm -hmm. that one would be interested in understanding. Um, I think that's kind of interesting too because I think there are a lot of things on YouTube that are kind of just expelled and put there without, without much thought. They could maybe be called waste also and I think um, YouTube is sort of a diagnosis of our of our culture, um, in some ways a sad diagnosis, but yeah. I think um, kind of tying them both together, the, the concept of trash uh, or an image of trash and turning it into art is uh, letting somebody view it in a way that they can actually look at it differently. Because um, if we were to walk past a real trash can, we're usually kind of disgusted by it, mm -hmm. but when it's framed in a certain way, um, people can have the time to look at it and kind of appreciate it. There may be some way that all this YouTube kind of overload, you know, if it were reframed, kind of like how this exhibition is mm -hmm. working to put it in a different light so that you look at it differently. Um, you know, maybe in the far future, people could look back at these ramblings from people, mm -hmm. you know, that are all over the internet mm -hmm. and see them, investigate them. You know, in like a diagnose different frame, them. yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I think we're so in all of it right now mm -hmm. that it seems mundane. Mm -hmm. You know, why are you watching uh, a dog go in circles for <laughs> two minutes, you know? Like, I've seen that before. Um, yeah. But you know, talk about people getting, being able to uh, retrieve useful information in uh, the social sciences there's, uh, where they've done, uh, talked about unobtrusive measures, measures of people's actions and residuals and so forth. And there's a concept called dross rate. Dross is that which you don't want versus finding those things that you do want. And I think that'll be a, a big uh, issue. It already exists in all that stuff that's on YouTube. How do you find it? Fortunately, there are these vehicles, the search engines, and they're getting more and more sophisticated. In some ways, that's a, that's a, a, a possibility of getting the stuff you want and leaving, a lo leaving all that other stuff, you know, set, old filter, expression separating filter. the wheat from the from the chaff. Yeah. Uh, 
so uh, in some sense the technology may allow, but then that requires some kind of an indexing. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that, to what extent can technology produce that indexing? I don't know. Well, and it's interesting also because any sort of indexing, I think then you get into questions of value and who's defining what, what's interesting to you as opposed to another person. And there's a lot of videos that probably not interesting to, you know, 95% of the population, but those 5% really need those videos. And it's, it's an interesting thing, it's an interesting question. What thoughts do you have? I have no idea what we're talking about. You don't know what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, I came in, like, super late, uh, so I oh, well, we, didn't even <laughs> see the video. I think that idea of indexing, I think YouTube acts as an index, kind of for society, like you were saying, it's kind of a metaphor or an example or exemplary, because it is human actions that are on there, maybe they're like, um, exaggerated or kind of put on the internet, but I think just having that database of information, while it may not be based in one specific thing, it is a database collecting all different kinds of cultural information, so I think in that sense it's an indexing of culture. Um, maybe it's not organized, but I think it is cool because later we'll be able to go back to that probably, you know, and then see like, oh, from like 1998 to like 2008, blah, 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 from 2008 to like 2018, blah, blah, you know, and it'll just be, I think it'll be a tool later in the future, even if it now is maybe a distraction, maybe mm -hmm. later in the future it'll be a useful tool, engaging kind of. I think even now, though, I mean, you you definitely have to sift through a lot to get to it. But there's so like the stuff that she that Carol Ann had in her video today, like that footage of all those artists talking about their work, and you know, there's some real like gems like on mm -hmm. on YouTube. But I mean, it, the the way it's organized though now, it's just it's so terribly hard to find anything on YouTube even if you know like exactly what you're looking for um, and that I mean you know that kind of goes back to what we we're talking about the indexing and who should be in control of making it easier for us to use but what other implications does that have mm -hmm. I would agree. Well, you mentioned um, if the indexing is done technologically I think that's a big difference than, mm -hmm. say, people having to necessarily catalog right. or mm -hmm. create a human readable index, mm -hmm. which is what happens a lot with mm -hmm. collections and things. You know, you have somebody who's a specialist in mm -hmm. the subject, but with the, I mean, technology, there should be a way to index either the, the words associated or the mm -hmm. subject matter. Well, yeah, I mean, you run into that a lot with YouTube. People do index, but then you have this question of it. You have a dog running around in circles five times. And is it like dog or corgi or, you know, like how do you right. find those? Like right. there isn't a defined basis for the terms. Uh, so. It even gets more complicated because uh, it, it, words are easily, more easily ascribed to objects. Like a dog, mm -hmm. you can, things. I mean, there's maybe 15 things, you, words you can use for a dog. But uh, if you want to, if you're interested in recording or trying to, find, if you're searching, uh, emotion, yeah. I mean, Concept. joy, yeah. uh, enthusiasm, yeah. and, and, and that, that kind of thing, or uh, 